Hello, and welcome to the Eternal ROI Podcast. My name is Chris Patton. I am the CEO of His Way at Work, and I come to you today with a friend of mine as well as a former guest on the show. His name is Troy Meacham. Troy is the CEO of ACR Supply, and I uh, want to welcome you to the show, Troy. And uh, you've done this before, so this is nothing new, but I appreciate you coming on board. Thank you so much for having me, Chris. I appreciate it. Looking forward to this. Very cool. Well, let's start out. I know you've been on before, but I want to make sure that the folks listening, maybe they haven't heard you before, maybe they need a reminder. But a little bit about you, about ACR Supply. Give us a, a brief bio there. Sure. Uh, ACR Supply Company was started in 1977 by my father. I joined him in 1980. Uh, and in 1988, uh, I accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior and uh, realized over the next five to 10 years that uh, this is outside of my personal family, my greatest opportunity for ministry. So, like I said, we're in the HVAC distribution world, and uh, we, we sell across the state of North Carolina into the south southeastern part of the country. We have right at 90 team members or families that we help support. Um, we have been, uh, let's see, we've, um, let's see, what else? What did you ask me, Chris? I'm sorry. I think you've hit it. You Now, you are currently okay. the CEO but yep. I think you were sharing with me, you've had some transition over the, uh, not too, uh, fairly recently, you've had a transition yes. your position. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, back in 2020, actually right before COVID hit, uh, we were moving to become a uh, attraction or EOS organization. And at that time, uh, my passion, my heart is culture and it's people and it's leadership. And um, <clears throat> so at that time, our, our leadership team got together. We uh, during that transition, and we appointed a president, Mark Bray, and a C COO, uh, Corey Salyards, who I think you'll have on uh, as well later yeah. today. And in that process, I'm like, well, what am I going to do? So, <laughs> well, I actually kind of had an idea what I wanted to do. And so uh, in that transition, what I have done is moved full time into the ministry of ACR Cares. I'm leading up all of the initiatives that fall under ACR Cares, in addition to uh, those ministry initiatives. I'm also uh, Corey and I are tag team, and we're we are also leading our three year leadership development program called Lead. And so those keep me pretty busy. Th that along with doing real estate and um, and construction and, and expansion, uh, new store locations or new brick and mortar locations. That's pretty much uh, what I do full time now. So far from retired, just just change the responsibilities, right? Yes, yes. And I, I, I'm trying to slow down a little bit, but <clears throat> I really enjoy this. And like I said, it's the people side of what we do and the culture side that really fires me up. It's my passion. So it's hard to kind of stay away, but I am getting more time with my wife and uh, spending time with her and my, our new grandbaby. So life's good, Chris. Man, it looks good on you, too. Yeah. So how long have you guys been with His Way at Work? I know it's been several years uh, yep. since you guys engaged us. When was that? So we first engaged you guys after talking with uh, the team down at Bob Barker Company uh, in, in Fuquay, North Carolina. And I think it was Nancy and Robert just spoke highly of y'all and, and encouraged us to engage uh, uh, Sheila and, and, and the team there to try to help us refine or define uh, our, 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 our caring, our, our, our just our ministry, just how, how we best care for our people, our community, and 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 the uttermost parts. And so we've, um, after working with Sheila, uh, I think we worked together for almost a year. Um, she really did just that and was able to help us clearly define, um, refine our values uh, and, and what those behaviors look like in those values. Mm -hmm. And and as a result, we actually do a quarterly value survey with our entire team member, along with our uh, Best Christian Workplace Institute uh, culture employee engagement survey every year. So um, those are those things are helping us keep a finger on the pulse of our organization uh, from from a culture perspective, from an engagement perspective, and from a values perspective. And that really helped us when we she made, she made us stop, slow down, and systematically go through all of this to make sure that we had we had a clear understanding of what we were expecting, what we wanted, but mm -hmm. also to have the right tools in place to be able to make sure that we were 
uh, we the results we we're getting is exactly what we were wanting. Does that make sense? That's sure, makes perfect sense. Yeah. Uh, I hear this a lot, right? Businesses doing yeah. a lot of things ahead of time, not suddenly mm -hmm. uh, deciding to do ministry or, or even starting to care about their people. Uh, yeah. So you guys were doing things before this, but as Sheila came in, help you systematize and, and slow down to organize and set up structure so that you can then speed up, right, and yep, expand exactly. and grow. So, yeah, yeah very cool. Mm -hmm. So you and I were talking the other day, and we were talking about mm -hmm. this episode coming up, and mm -hmm. I shared with you something I want to share with with those listening, and, and we've touched on this in, in past episodes, but – Effectively, it was it was right at four years ago. Uh, our staff engaged with <clears throat> four or five other companies, various sizes, shapes, and locations, and the idea was to do a face to face interview of employees and ask open ended questions and find out what do employees actually see as caring. Right. You know, we've got businesses yep, yep. and business owners that say, I know exactly what my people need. I know what I want to do with caring. But we wanted to go to the employees themselves and we were requested mm -hmm. by these businesses to do so. So we did these interviews. So effectively what it was, you've got one of our staff members, an employee in a uh, single room, one on one, 15 to 20 <laughs> minutes with uh, three to four questions open ended. One of those questions was, OK, Mr. And Ms. Employee. What does caring mean to you? Not mm -hmm. what does your company define as caring, but specifically for you, if this company is to care for you, what would that look like for you individually? And right. what was amazing is we, we knew certain answers we would get, or at least we thought. And the truth was we ended up with majority of these answers in three different buckets. And the first one was pretty obvious. We we knew this one already, or at least assumed it. And that is the employee said, listen, if I'm in a crisis, I need the company to be there for me. Meet me mm -hmm. in crisis. So if I yep. lose a loved one, if I have medical issues, if I have financial issues, you're not just kicking me to the curb because, hey, now I'm suddenly yep. a, a drag, but you're actually meeting me there, helping me some way, right? And that wasn't mm -hmm. a shock. The, I'm going to skip the second one and come back to it. The third sure. bucket – was fix my job. Now, this was the most surprising of all of them, but it basically said, uh, the employee said, listen, I work in a chain of uh, the business, meaning there's a department that produces something before me, passes it to my department, and then I pass it along. And there's a log jam before me or after me that's impacting negatively my ability to do the job. So fix mm -hmm. my job, clean up that process or that process so then my job can be done effectively. And when I can run full mm -hmm. tilt, then nothing's slowing us down. Or it may be that, hey, the, <clears throat> the process that I have to wait on, uh, for example, we talked to uh, one logistics company. They had over-the-road truck drivers. And the truck driver said, listen, I'm going to tell you exactly what caring means to me. He said, when I take my rig, my tractor trailer, into the shop, and I got to do it once a quarter for safety inspections, that kind of thing. I take it in on a Monday. I know, because I do the work myself when I can, I know that it should take basically one day of work. And I should be able to get my truck back on Tuesday and get on the road. <clears throat> and instead, I get it back on Thursday because the dispatch in that shop is so messed up, so delayed. And I ended up getting the truck back on Thursday, which means I go take my load. I'm over the weekend and I miss my kid's soccer match. Mm -hmm. You fix my job means fix the dispatch, fix the shop yep. so that when I get my truck in there, I get it back in a day. I'm on the road. I'm back by Friday. I'm at the kid's soccer game on Saturday. And, and our and, – employers or CEOs did not recognize how much that meant to the employees for in caring, right? They think, well, wow. that's just business improvement. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a big surprise. But the second bucket that I want to focus on, which is really what applies to you guys, is was pretty much as surprising. Now, what the, the bucket we called it was, help me to grow. Now, mm -hmm. instantly we think training in the company, right? Teach me more mm -hmm. about what we do. Uh, in your case, teach me more about HVAC systems. Help me to grow within my position professionally so that I can advance, make more money, support my family, and so forth. And that is part of it. 
but they mm-hmm. also gave answers that were related to that, but said, hey, help me be a better dad or mom or a better husband or wife, a better citizen in the community. Help me to learn things that might round out my skill set that I might actually use leaving this company to go do something that I really have always wanted to do. And mm-hmm. that grow me as a person was surprising because – we just haven't looked at the employee as needing the company to help them do those things. But mm-hmm. the issue is most of them don't have the resources. If they do, they don't know where to look or the, the ability to pay for those things. So that's a pretty big deal. And we see this being done well in a lot of companies. But you guys, mm-hmm. you have a pretty special program. I think you mentioned it mm-hmm. a minute ago called LEAD. Uh, yes. You guys have been, if I remember right, you're doing it the last 10 years I'm yes, right pretty in. sure knowing you, 10 years ago version of lead and the today version of lead, not exactly the same thing, right? It's definitely not the same. Yes. Yeah. And we hopefully made a lot made a lot better. Yeah, I, th- I would guess so. So what I'd love yeah. for you to do is give us, first of all, just a sure. thumbnail. What is lead? And then let's take yep. it all the way back to the beginning and walk it from the very beginning. What problem were you trying to solve? What were you trying to address within the company? And then move us along the way from there. Sure. So lead uh, stand, stands for leadership. That's what was, we want to help our people grow. Um, Chris, our purpose statement is to build relationships, impact lives, and glorify God. So um, we, first of all, we want people to have deep, authentic, close working relationships with their coworkers and with our customers. I want people to have best friends at work. Uh, next, we want to impact people's lives. I want the day that Mark or Corey or Brian or whoever uh, decide, decides to retire, they can look back on their life and say their life is better off because because they were a part of the ACR family, mm-hmm. because we help them grow personally, professionally, financially, and even spiritually. And that's where I'll come back to in a second. And the last one is glorify God. So I feel like if I glorify God the way I treat my wife, if the way we treat our coworkers, the way we treat our customers, and I'll be successful because basically we're working for an audience of one. And, and as long as uh, the Lord's pleased with me, uh, then I feel like that is success. If I'm successful in the Lord's eyes, that's all that really matters because I want to hear that well done, good and faithful servant someday. And so back to the impact of people's lives. So uh, about, uh, and, and stop me if, 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 you, if you have a question or whatever, but back about, about 12 to 13 years ago, uh, we were really, for me, I was right in the, in the I guess, the, the prime of my career. And I was just, I was, I was set on go. I was 90 miles an hour with my hair on fire. I mean, I just loving life, doing everything I could to help ACR supply grow. And, and, and again, impact lives and impact communities and, and put a lot of food on the table for our, for all the families we help support. And, and so, but one of the things I was struggling with was uh, how do I identify, how do I identify talent inside of an organization? And sometimes that can be very hard. And so, uh, and, 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 with the impact lives part too, how do we identify that talent and utilize the gifts and abilities that God's given all these different people inside of our organization? And I will tell you right now that through the lead program is exactly how I was able to identify Mark Bray, who's now currently our president, and Corey Salyards, who's also now our COO, uh, through this lead program. And so as we began to pour into people, we started this process. It, 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 first, we started with year one. And it's, it's a three-year development program, and every year is different. We started with year one, and it was basically a classroom-style uh, format where we would uh, we, we have curriculum set up uh, from conflict resolution to leadership development, communication, and so on that went through September or through all the way through May of the next year to stay out of the, what we call the summer season, where we're super busy. And so we set up these classes, and we'd, and we'd go through these in this, like I said, this classroom style, and we would pull these people together from across the company. Well, how do we do that? How do we identify who to bring into the program? Because once you're into the program, you're in, you can go all the way through the, the three years if you choose to do so. Well, what we did, Chris, was we asked the leaders, the individual leaders across the company that were made store managers, maybe they were about department heads, whatever, identify who, who on your team do you see, um, see gift, gifts and talents that you feel like they could really – uh, in a program like LEAD could really flourish and learn a lot from and, and help the, help them go to the next level in their leadership development. So the process we put in place was this. 
Uh, they have a person has to be nominated by they still does have to be nominated by their local leader, their direct supervisor for this program. And once they're nominated, then they have to write a, a two to three page essay or just a, a message about why they want to grow with the leader. And what I tell you what, if you ask people that question, you can tell real quickly how serious they are about leading, growing as a leader, growing personally, professionally and, and even spiritually. And so they submit them and we have an ad, ad hoc committee that comes together from our senior team, goes through those um, goes through those uh, essays and then we approve or disapprove. And the majority of time we have approved everybody, but there are times we have held some people back because we didn't feel like they were quite ready. And so um, once that process has taken place and once those essays have been gone through, then we will kick off uh, year one and we, we approve them. And then they, they get to come into the uh, come into the program for year one. And so, and again, that classroom style, um, I tell you what, a, a side benefit is just the camaraderie and the mm. rapport that develops within that group. And because it, it suddenly they, they have they gain friendships they maybe haven't even seen because we're across the state of North Carolina. You got people coming in from all over the state, and suddenly they get to really spend time with Joe, or they get to spend time with Mark or Corey, and they've never. And so, and so, and, and so, as leadership too, we get to experience and see and hear uh, whether whether I would be facilitating or Robert Ferguson, our, who helped us with that class that, that first year many years ago, um, would be able to identify. Okay, uh, this person here, this person here is really they're hitting their stride. They're really understanding. Uh, this whole concept of leadership, servant leadership, which is our model here at ACR Supply, mm -hmm. and really beginning to buy in and, and grow. We see the growth happening right before our eyes. And so that was part of what we did to, to identify the people. And so uh, you and I were joking the other day uh, that we hear people talk about, <clears throat> um, about, gosh, why don't I spend so much time and effort and money investing in these people when they potentially may leave? Mm -hmm. And 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 the the adverse of how the other side of that coin is well, what happens if you don't do that and they stay right and you, we've right. all heard that before and it's true though and so I have no problem spending all and matter of fact we've had a lot of people I should say a lot I don't know the number but a, a number of people who have gone through this program and now they're off to another career doing something else which is completely fine with me because. I feel like we're living out a purpose statement by impacting their lives because I know the material. I know it well. I know all three years. And I, it's, it, a lot of the material we're using today is stuff that's impacted my life. So if I grew mm -hmm. up with or learning and, and reading and, and, and take, being a part of. So it's been it's been huge. And I can go into more detail for year two and three as well. But different format, but really, really uh, powerful formats where we get to develop deep, deep relationships and, and really begin to hone our skills and, and get to know one another, just really uh, iron sharpening iron. So. so when you first started, let's go back. You mentioned that mm -hmm. part of your core values, your mission includes impacting people, right? So yes, sir. this mm -hmm. naturally flows out of that. And you yes, said you, you want to identify talent within the company. And then you yes. quickly blew by – and by the way, our president and CEO were both identified through this program, and you ran on to something else. Mm -hmm. What? Yep. So yep. go back to that. So both Mark sure. and Corey mm -hmm. were, you know, give us a sense of what positions did they hold prior to this mm -hmm. program? How long ago did they go through, and, and when did that move happen for those guys? Because that's, that's a big deal. How many people can say, how many yep. companies can say, we started a – a leadership development program, yep. and out of that, we've got our top two leaders uh, in the company. Yep. Yep. Well, I can tell you the um, part part of year two is I would spend one on one time with every single every single um, student or every single person in 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 lead, and we used to call it future leaders development program, but now we call it lead. But I would spend one on one time. You want to know. You want to get to know your team members, send one on one time with them going through content driven discussion uh, at least once a month for a solid year. Mm. And that's exactly what happened. And so Mark came in the organization many years ago. I, I don't want to quote the number, but it's it's, it's double digit. <laughs> he came in and he came in as a work, working in the warehouse and working as a warehouse manager at our Durham store. And, it, and Corey came in working on the sales counter. He was actually a customer of ours, and he came in to work the what we call the sales counter. And and uh, and that's where they both started. And so slowly but surely, and and you know, 
And anyway, they're starting they're starting to do their thing. They're starting to really um, get some traction inside of the organization. But in this program, they jump they jump right in and jump right on it. And and then boom! All of a sudden, I'm spending one on one time with them in year two in this thing, and I'm like, okay, I, I see. And so again, year two is once a month. Uh, I get together with every single class member, and we would we would review a book that they would read that month, and we would review maybe some leadership uh, media. Uh, it could be some of Dave Ramsey stuff, could be John Maxwell stuff, and then we would go over those things, and we would we would ask them to do a net out. In other words, what's your big takeaway from this content? But we just spend time. Um, in prayer, we spend time um, just encouraging one another and getting to know one another and developing that deep rapport. And so I've done this with, I, we don't know how many students have been through it, but I would say right now, if they estimated, and Corey may have the exact number, I would estimate that probably 50 to 60% of our uh, team, our team, to- all of our team members have gone through uh, lead or they're currently going through lead. Wow. And so um, that yeah, that's really, I mean, you think about it, you get everybody rowing in the same direction, you know, understanding and learning some of the same leadership principles, especially the servant leadership model that we, that we have at ACR SPA. And it's been, it's been pretty powerful. And so, yeah, I I don't mean to blow by that earlier, but uh, (laughs) when you, when you get, when you, when you spend time with somebody one-on-one is dedicated and um, it, 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 and, and it does take up a lot of my calendar time, but you know what, it's so worth it because now these guys are living out their dreams and they're doing what they're called to do. Uh, they're they're working in their gifts and strengths and doing a much better job. And I say this, I'm, I mean, I mean this honestly. They're doing so much better of a job at being president and being, if you understand traction in the EOS model, Mark's now the visionary, and he's throwing the wet noodles on the wall and finding stuff that'll stick. And then Corey's the integrator. He's the stuff, he's the guy that's going to take this stuff and make it happen and yeah. uh, across the company. And to watch them work. And to be able to identify them early on through this program and watch them every single day is incredibly rewarding because I'm telling you, they're doing so much better of a job. They're taking ACR supply to places that I never could. We had that leadership lid John Maxwell talks about. Well, that's me. I mean, that was yeah. me for a while. I was just, and, and so we couldn't couldn't grow any more than, than what Troy was. But now these guys are taking to the next level, and especially through EOS Traction, we are We've really uh, we've had significant growth over the last several years as these guys are taking the ball and running with it, or taking the baton and running with it. So uh, that's that's kind of how it all happened. Yeah, and that's part of the story at least. And um, I'm super pleased with how they're doing, and, and um, happy that I that uh, we were able to add this program in place where I could see see them, uh, you know, spend time with them face to face and and learn. Man, these guys are gifted. These guys have got it going on. You know, Troy, you a couple th- couple thoughts. Number one, for those not familiar with EOS, EOS doesn't make good people or bad people. EOS is simply a set of railroad tracks to run on. So it is a system, an operating system within the business yeah. that gives you a, a set of tracks. Now, if you've got really yeah. good people and you set the tracks up right, they can go twice as fast – because there's there's rails to run on, but that's that's the EOS part. But I want to go back, still back to these guys. Couple sure. things that are potentially going through the minds of those listening right now. So you have mm-hmm. been running the company for how many years? Yeah, um, my dad Prior maybe to the general transition. manager in about yeah maybe general manager in the early nineties. He kind of semi retired, okay. and yeah, so you have the early nineties, and then. Um, 97 was really a, a, a watershed moment for our company where a lot of things changed. And uh, we began to really go down this path of ministry in the marketplace. We began to go down this path of strategic planning long before EOS traction. And so that's when a lot of stuff really started to change then. So, yeah, but I've been right. general manager since 93. Here's the first thought, I think, maybe going through some minds. How in the world sure. do you have the time to do what you just described? Now, because yep. – I know for a fact, as you just described, one-on-one with each of the students each month for a year, Mm -hmm. that's not happening in 30 minutes. That's not happening Mm -hmm. without intentional scheduling, and that's while you're running the company, right? Mm -hmm. So that's a big investment. Yes. But for you to make that investment, obviously you saw the benefit. You saw the – Yes. Or at least anticipated the benefit. Speak to that. Sure. Well, um, 
the, I mean, why would you not do it? Because it's, uh, our people are our greatest asset. And so, yes, it was, it was hard work. And, and we were laying the foundation for a future growth and success. And I knew it was going to take up a lot of my time. But the way we do these things, Chris, is we, they're very intentional. They're very structured. And so we, we actually, like in year two, we get together in January. We set our calendar for the entire year. So we know every single month when we're going to be meeting, what material we're going to be covering, and how all that's going to work. And when you're organized like that, you can actually spend more. So we spend these sessions are about an hour and a half in year two. Uh, uh, year three, the sessions are about one hour and, and, and year, uh, year one, the sessions are three hours. And so, uh, I should have done that in order, but either way you kind of get a feel for yeah. it. But, um, for me, year two is where I really get to know people. Sure. And, and so the way I did this and keeping it structured and organized and everybody, everybody had to know exactly when they were, where they had to be, uh, what, what they needed to have done, the material they had to be completed. So it, it was no, it was, you know, no ambiguity here. And one other thing I did not mention for every single year, when somebody comes into this program of lead, they actually sign a covenant to do the work, to follow through and to, and, and to not show up. Well, I didn't quite get so-and-so writ. No, nah, that's not acceptable. You have to sign your name on the dot line here. I need to know if you're serious about this. So I've never had anybody not sign the covenant. But what happens is that kind of takes the the accountability to the next level, and people go, "Well, that's pretty serious." I, I, if I'm going to get my word to do this, the, these things, I need to make sure I have these things done. And so, yeah. as far as I can tell, the majority of people, not everybody, uh, does actually get the work done. So, so you know, I, I am busy. I'm busy like everybody else is. But again, if you if you the, the, no, nothing worthwhile ever comes easy. And so I knew if I had to lay the foundation of this company be future, successful in the future, we had to develop these, leader, these leaders and continue to develop leaders, leaders uh, across the company and their leadership skills. And so that's why I, I was all in yeah. when we started year one. Okay, let's do year two. Okay, let's do year three. And then we stopped at year three. And, and so now we have these set um, materials and, and the structure – and it's different every year, and it's been it's been it's been invaluable. Uh, not not just to identify these people, but seeing people grow. Whenever you know, I've never seen an organization uh, who's uh, that wasn't growing if their people were growing. Whenever your your people are growing, your organization. Yeah, is you're right. Let's and so, and so, so go ahead. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm I'm stuck on this, and I just want to make sure I don't want to beat it up too much. Mm-hmm. You've you said 50 to 60 percent of your employee base, which is roughly 90 mm-hmm. employees at the moment, um, have gone through this over the years. Or and, they're currently going through it. Mm-hmm. Or, or are currently. And mm-hmm. you've poured time and effort and energy into it. But just going back to these two guys, and it's not these mm-hmm. two guys. That's not why you did it. You didn't set out to build a program right. to develop your future COO and president. But building leaders includes that possibility. Mm-hmm. You don't have to. You don't really don't have to answer this, but hypothetically, mm-hmm. or, or should I say rhetorically, what would it cost you as you come into the year deciding that you are going to shift responsibility and appoint a president and COO? What it, what would it cost you to go out and headhunt those two positions? Mm, a lot dollars <laughs> and time, and yeah, I could give you. I could give you some. Not frankly, not crazy outlandish stories mm-hmm. personally hiring COO uh, process for our family business back in Georgia, the dealership groups, and went through three before I found one that worked. What was mm-hmm. the cost of the first one? I, right. I don't even want to count it because it was horrendous. Uh, and mm-hmm. then the second one before finding the third one. And then even then, it takes how long before you know you can trust them? I mean, I'm playing this yep. out, but I want yep. those listening to think through, while you invested heavily mm-hmm. over the years, what is the payoff to have two guys at the top of the company that you've watched for many years? Mm-hmm. You've seen them in all the roles. They know your company inside and out. They're developed. They're personally uh, engaged with you and – they just rolled right into these positions. I mean, that's mm-hmm. it's a small subset of the overall benefits you're seeing, but don't yep. lose track if you're listening what kind of benefit that is. And then take the additional, you know, 50, 60 people that have gone through or are going through this program 
and say, my goodness, what additional ripple benefits are there just to the mm-hmm. business? And we hadn't even talked about yep. what are they what are they gaining outside, right? Because if this is leadership, right. this applies at home, this applies at the church or in the community. It's yep. just massive. But but to your point earlier too, not that I when we decided to make this move and put and put them in these roles here, not that I I mean, if you hire somebody outside you know, you're right. You hit or miss. You really don't know. Do they get on the job? Are they going to be a great culture fit? Are they are they, are they they're going to the same leadership model, same values, all this? You don't know till they're there. Well, I'd already spent years with these guys, right? Yeah. Working alongside of them every day, especially through this program. So I didn't, I didn't, I didn't think it was a hundred percent chance that they. But I was close. I, I kind of felt like I know these guys well enough now. And I've spent enough time with them as, as far as visionary and integrator or president and COO. I, I feel like with all of my heart, these guys are not only going to be successful, they're going to do these jobs a lot better than I ever thought I could. Yeah. And, 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 and I was serious. I'm serious about that. And so, I believe it. and they are, they're doing a fantastic job. But, but again, if, like you said, we, the time was already invested, already kind of, I already kind of knew they were going to knock it out of the park. And at least I felt like they were. At a high uh, level of confidence versus, man, it would have been a nightmare. What you described kind of gave me chills to think about going outside the organization to try to find uh, those two roles when I was ready to make the transition that I made. I was going, I can't imagine. That would be like rolling the dice. This was not like rolling the dice. No, this, not at this all. Was, I feel this was, a, this was a very calculated and very, I think, um, it was it – was, uh, it was a great, great. I, I'm glad we did it. I, I'm so happy, man. Because, like I said, they're living out their dream. I'm living out my dream. It's really working well. Man, Troy, there's there's hours that we could unpack here. Fortunately, I get a chance here in a little bit. We're gonna uh, do an episode with, in the, or I guess in the next episode, it'll be with uh, Corey, who is the the COO that we're talking about here. That's been through the program, mm-hmm. and now he mm-hmm. is leading some of that right at ACR. Mm-hmm. So, yes, he is. so we'll get to talk to him a little bit more detail and, and sure. what I'm going to, you know, I want to hear from him. What do the other employees think? What are some other stories that he's mm-hmm. seen? And then what was he sure. thinking coming in, as you said, from the, as a customer of ACR moves to the mm-hmm. sales counter, you know, and then he gets to, to be in this program with the one running the company for mm-hmm. a period, and then suddenly now he's the one doing it. So it's going to mm-hmm. be an interesting episode talking to him. Um, you've been fantastic. I wish I could spend another hour or two just unpacking all of it, but the program yeah. is phenomenal. I give you such praise for that, and I know yeah. God has led you in that. He's gifted you in in the development of this, but uh, if you are uh, not familiar with uh, ACR, look them up. Um, Long time friends of ours and doing a fantastic mm-hmm. job and also obviously no one knows but you let you guys look to be poised for an incredible future i feel i feel like we are and i feel like the lord has blessed us beyond all measure and and honestly if i could say this to the leaders out there the business owners principals whatever your role may be i mean if you, I, I truly feel like and i say this with confidence but also with humility I feel like I'm living my dream. I really want to say that, but it does take time. You got to, you got to pour in. You got to do. You got, you got to identify people. You've got to build your team. You got to, you got to really identify those who feel like have those gifts and talents and abilities. But once you do, uh, I feel like I got the greatest job in the world because I get to work with the greatest group of people in the world. And there's nothing, there's nothing like that. It's just, I'm just, I feel, I feel like. Um, I'm just a blessed man, and so I get to I get to live it every day. Do we have problems? Heck yeah, we got problems. We got our works like everybody else does, and we're going to, the, the, when the problems come. Though we have some wonderfully talented people that help us, me, all uh, work through those problems and and come out on the other side. So it's been yeah, I feel feel very blessed. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to share with us, and uh, I'm just in awe what you guys have accomplished there and, and can't wait to see uh, as this next stage continues to see what kind of growth you see out of that company and and the people, the, the ripple effects, right, the families and so forth. Yeah. So well yes, done. Sir. I'm not the awesome. one you want to hear well done from, but but I'll add it before you hear the ultimate one. <laughs>
All right. I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Chris. Troy, it's been great talking with you and I look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you, buddy. It's been a joy. Thank you. <laughs>